I am going to be reading from Luke chapter 4. Luke chapter 4, verse 42. Luke 4, 42. It reads thusly from the New International Version of the Bible that at daybreak, Jesus went out to a solitary place. The people were looking for him, and when they came to where he was, they tried to keep him from leaving them. But he said, I must proclaim the good news of the kingdom of God to the other towns, because that is why I was sent. And he kept on preaching in the synagogues of Judea. The word of the Lord for the people of God. Thanks be unto God. For these moments that are yours and mine, I want to conclude our bodybuilding series for the month with the subtopic, I need a break. I need a break. If you would just look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I need a break. I need a break. You may be seated in the presence of our God. Eternal, most gracious God, our Father, we thank you even now for this preaching moment. Now, God, give me an anointing, God, that will allow your preaching word to be effective, to go forth in fertile ground. Now, God, forbid that I should glory, save it be the cross. Increase in me so that I might decrease. Give me strength. Give me power. This we ask in your name and the people of God together said, amen. I need, I need a break. As we encounter and journey together in this bodybuilding series, we've Focus on the mind. We've talked about the temple. We've talked about the finances. But one essential part of being healthy bodies and being healthy people of God is to ensure that we have rest. 48% of Americans have an adequate amount of rest, equaling up to eight to nine hours a night of sleep. The reality is researchers have come to recognize this phenomenon. In over 50 years, they have studied sleep. Uh, patterns and put people in sleep laboratories to understand and to investigate sleep patterns. And they recognize as researchers have res produced research on sleep patterns that they found out that the first night of sleep, the first night effect, usually that data is so skewed because people are placed in sleeping labs and they are not familiar with that surrounding that they determine that that data is not used in to be able to show any sort of trend of what kind of behavior or what kind of what is necessary to ensure that we can encourage other Americans, people of color and all across the world to have adequate amounts of sleep. But there was one researcher that published this week in the new scientific journal that that investigated this first night effect. They recognize that, that the data that is so skewed because the first night is so peculiar and is so unusual that when you find yourself in a unique place and a, a new area and a new space in life, they recognize that you do not sleep fully on the first night. That's if you go to a hotel, you find yourself traveling, you may find yourself in a new place just visiting or on vacation, you may find it hard to be able to get a good night's sleep. So they recognize, they, 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 they problematize this question and use a scientific theory to put people to sleep. And they recognize that if I, if I, if I, if I send a sound bite to the left hemisphere of a person's brain while they're sleeping, then they don't respond. But if I, if I, if I place a sound bite on the right hemisphere, then their response is more, is more prone on the first night of sleep. Which shows that the study recognizes that on the first night of sleep in a new place, our brains, which are in two hemispheres, left and right hemispheres, our brains, when we go to sleep in a new place, our brains are wired to stay awake. They're wired to understand their surroundings. And when we sleep, only half of the brain is sleep on a new place. And the reality is someone here today has been wondering why you can't sleep. You, you've been wondering how you can and lay in bed and sleep and not be able to be restful and you don't understand how in the world you go to bed every night and it seems as though you can't find a good night's sleep and you're wondering how in the world you get up every morning and why you need your coffee just to get wired but the reality is today that anytime you're going to a new place that the reality is that half of your brain is only able to sleep yeah there are about few people in the house today that understand that the reality is that when you are
are going someplace new, when you are headed into a different direction and you find yourself in a different environment, the reason why you're so restless at night, the reason why you're so can't, you can't sleep at night is because you're in a new place and you're in a new environment. Yeah, that's why you, you're scrolling through Facebook all night and you're scrolling through Instagram all night and you've been tossing and turning in the bed and you've been wondering, God, why can't I get some sleep? But God sent me down here to Victory Cathedral this morning uh, just to tell about 30 of you today uh, that the reason why you've been so restless, uh, the reason why you've been so problematized uh, in your sleep, the reason why you've been catching so much hell at home and on your job uh, is because God has been preparing you uh, for your next place. Yeah, God. God has preparing you for for your next place, your your next environment. And, and the reality is the reason why you're so restless is because half of your brain is on alert and, and half is, is, is on alert. That's why reality is that we're so linked to mammals and that's why birds can sleep with one eye open because they recognize that they got to keep watch over what's coming next because I realize that what God is getting ready to do in my life eyes have not seen and ears have not heard and neither has it appeared unto the manner of man and yet what it shall be yeah and so there might be somebody in this house today you you've been wrestling all night long and really this morning you came to church not because you wanted to be here but you was just tired of being awake and, and you came into church this morning uh, because you've been tired of just being up waiting and looking at the stars in the sky counting sheep sheep and trying to figure out how you gonna make it and how I'm going to work and understanding I'm so tired and I'm so draggy but I came to tell you you got one eye open because God is getting ready to show you something in your life that you've never experienced before I don't know if I'm in the right house this morning but there ought to be somebody here who can pause for the cause and give God some glory right now because I might be restless but the reality is God has something more. God has something more for me. And as we encounter the text today in Luke chapter 4, we find Jesus as he is entering into his ministry. He, he has just recently, uh, he, he has embarked into the professional ministry of his life. And, and he's at 30 years of age around the time of our text. And the Bible says that at daybreak, Jesus goes into a, a solitary place because Jesus recognizes that there is purpose in rest. There's, there's purpose in rest. And beloved of God, we need a break sometimes because there's purpose in rest. The reality is that beloved of God today, that, that, that Jesus, after he has healed people in verse 40, in verse 40, he's healed blinded eyes. He's healed, uh, he's, he's healed Peter's mother and he, he's healed those who have been of death and, and death, uh, and who have deaf ears. He's, he's healed little children. But at daybreak, the Bible says he goes into a solitary place. How is it that at the peak of the day, at the prime of his ministry, at the, at, the, at the pinnacle of his career, that he recognizes that every now and then he must find himself in a solitary place? He finds himself going to a place where, where he's by himself just to get a little rest. And, and the reality is today, beloved of God, Jesus recognizes that rest is sacred. Rest, rest is, is sacred. And every now and then, we, we must appreciate the sacredness of rest. What do you mean, Stephen? Well, well, beloved, the, if you go into Genesis in the creation story, when God created the heavens and the earth, he said it was good. And God created the flock, and he said it was good. But on the seventh day, God didn't say it was good. God said this day is holy. The Sabbath is, is a, it, 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 he said, this day has been set aside for, for my glory. And this day, on the seventh day, I, I created everything for six days and, and it was good. But, but on the seventh day, I reserved some things for myself. And I created a day that will be holy. And he hollowed it, which means he made that day 
day holy, which recognizes, beloved of God, that rest and peace is holy unto God. And, and the reality is so many of us are walking around so uninspired, so mundane, and so complacent because we have not tapped into the holiness of rest and we wonder why we come to church week after week and don't feel anything we wonder why we come to bible study and don't feel anything it's because god is wondering you've been looking for the holy in all the wrong places you you've been looking for the holy in six days but god's saying your holiness is wrapped into the sacredness of the sabbath and, and god says i created just a time and a space and a place for my people to worship me uh, and they get so busy they get so bogged down with what's going on in the world that they forget how holy the day is supposed to be oh, on the sabbath day you ought to be able to just say you know what god it's just some me and some you time uh, it's just some time where i need to be in god's presence and be in god's face uh, and sit at god's feet i don't know if there's anybody in the house today but my grandmother is in you leave Florida on Sunday at her house. Uh, you weren't ironing no clothes. You weren't putting nothing in no washing machine. But on her house on Sunday morning wasn't nothing going on because grandma recognized that on Sunday morning we reserved the day so God can get the glory. Uh, and I don't know if there's anybody in the house today. You recognize that your life has been missing something. You, you've been missing a void uh, and you've been feeling so empty but God said me here to remind you that every now and then uh, you might have to go into your secret closet uh, and turn your phone on do not disturb uh, just so you can get uh, into the presence of God. Uh, is there anybody in the house today uh, that knows that's your testimony uh, with all the hell on my job uh, all the hell in my school uh, I need some time alone with God. Uh, I need to see God's face. Uh, I need to be with God. Uh, yeah there's so much going on in my world uh, so much going on with my friends uh, my husband is acting crazy uh, my wife is acting strange uh, but I know one thing for sure uh, if I can get into the holy of the holies uh, if I can tap into the presence uh, of the almighty uh, I can be in God's presence uh, and I don't know about you uh, but something strange happens uh, when I get in God's presence uh, and I don't know about you uh, but when I find my Myself, I am underneath the glory cloud of God. I, I tap into visions I, I have never seen before. I, when you get into the glory of God, I, there's some things that will not be the same. What do you mean? Well, well, it's in the text. Our vacation Bible school scholars understand that in Genesis that and in around the 32nd chapter when 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 Jacob was Fusing and had a vision of the latter and of angels ascending and descending. He, he could not tap into the vision of God until he got some rest. He could not see where God was going to take him until he recognized that God had to sometime place his head on a rock. And the reality is, beloved of God, look at Joseph. Joseph, beloved of God, when he went to sleep, he had dreams. And when he went to sleep, and his, his dreams were so unique and so scary that his own friends and brothers and relatives had to put him in a pit. And, and so many of us are sitting on borrowed dreams and sitting under so much capacity of what God has for us. But God sent me here just to remind you that all he's waiting on uh, is for you to just have a little rest and just to sleep a little bit and, and just stay with me a little while longer. God says I need some me time. And not only is it purpose in rest, but beloved of God, there's power in resistance. There's power, power in resistance. The Bible records for us that the people of God who were surrounding Jesus went to a solitary place, but they found where he was. And the Bible says that they tried to keep him there. And, and, and it reminds me so much, Dr. Norfolk, of when I was in high school, uh, son, and I was in high school in Little Rock, Arkansas, and in this private school that I went to, we had to wear blazers. We wore our senior blazers. They were blue blazers, and one day, they called my dad and told me I had to go to the principal's office because I wore my blazer inside out. 
I was taking an episode from Fresh Prince of Bel-Air and I was going to walk around campus with my blazer inside out. And they said, now, this is against the policy of the school. So being the protesting activist that I am, I said, show me in the student handbook where it says you can't wear your blazer inside out. And, and, and so they were, they were so upset that I was walking around campus like I was the fresh bristle of Little Rock with my blazer inside out. And they didn't know what to do with me. And so they called my dad. And my dad, my dad got me on the phone. Said, son, now I know you, you're out there and you want to be who you are. But, but just, 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 just stay in, in, in line for a little while longer till you graduate because my dad recognized that it wasn't necessarily nothing wrong with me. I just knew that I was different and I knew I was unique and just because everybody else wore their blazer one way don't mean I had to wear my blazer a different way. You got to understand that every now and then people will try to limit you and confine you to how they want you to be and how they want you to dress but when you know who you are huh, you got a swag on 10 and if I wear my blazer outside in I, I know I'm still the flyest person in the whole school because I know who I am and the beloved of God here it is in the text they knew where Jesus was uh, but they did not know who Jesus was huh? yeah it's in the text because the Bible says uh, they tried to keep him there but if they knew who he was and not just where he was they would understand that whatever they attempted to do to confirm find Jesus to one location uh, it was only going to be a trial uh, all they did was try it's in the text the Bible says they tried to keep him there but they did not know that God's assignment for Jesus Christ uh, was so much bigger than what they've expected it, it was so much larger than what they had prepared for uh, and that's why all they did uh, was just try uh, and there might be somebody in the house today uh, that has a try kind of testimony. Uh, they tried to kill me. Uh, they tried to destroy me. They they tried to take my job. They tried to take my house. Uh, but all they did was try. Uh, they tried to take my child. Uh, they tried to say I wouldn't be anything. Uh, but all they did was try. Uh, and I came to look to, I came to celebrate this Sunday morning because uh, after all we've been through as a people, uh, they tried to tear our history down. Uh, they tried to say we were three of a man uh, but guess what uh, the next time you go get a $20 bill uh, they gonna have a have a Terry Tubman on front of it uh, get your tub dub uh, and put it down uh, you don't know uh, like I know uh, what they did uh, all they did was try uh, is there anybody here uh, that can give God some glory uh, that you didn't let them stop you uh, you didn't let them block you uh, you didn't die when they tried uh, you didn't give up when they tried. Uh, you didn't throw in the towel when they tried. Uh, but there was something inside of you uh, that says, though they slay me, uh, yet will I trust them. Uh, is there anybody in this house today uh, got a spirit of resistance? Uh, you don't know my story. Uh, you don't know how I got here. Uh, I just came to let you know uh, you can't put me in no box. Uh, you can't limit me. Uh, you can't stop me because uh, greater is he uh, that's within me uh, than he uh, that's within the world uh, somebody here uh, ought to shout yeah huh. there's power in resistance there's power in 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 resistance y'all please be seated we don't want to scare my professor today and I got to I still got to pass the class, y'all. So, so, <laughs> beloved, finally, there is also potential in release. The study, the study shows and concludes its, its research with the findings that they understand that the first night effect can be reduced if you bring something that is familiar to you. If you bring a pillow from home or you bring something that reminds you of a scent of you or back in your own home and that would decrease the, the restlessness on the first night. They recognize that if you have a level of familiarity and a level of comfort that, that you won't be as restless on the 
first night. And, and beloved of God, that's essentially what Jesus tells us today in this text. Is that Jesus says that I, I can't be confined to one place and I, I need a break because the next place I'm going to, I, I got to bring something that's familiar with me. And he says, the Bible says, Jesus tells them, I must proclaim uh, the good news of the kingdom of God. And the reality is, Jesus says, the next place I'm going, uh, they may not understand and they may not expect me. They, it might be restless over there. It, it might be rough over there, but I know I got to bring something with me uh, that I'm familiar with. Uh, and Jesus brings his familiarity uh, of the good news of the kingdom of God. Uh, and I just stopped by victory today uh, just to tell my beloved family today uh, that you need a break every now and then. But there's so much potential uh, in your release uh, as long as you bring something familiar with you uh, as long as you have something uh, that reminds you uh, of where you've been before uh, see the reason why uh, I can bring my pillow uh, when I go to a new place uh, is because the same pillow uh, that was with me at home uh, is the same pillow uh, I can trust every night uh, when I'm at home uh, I don't have any problems going to sleep uh, it's because I know uh, that my pillow understands me uh, I know I, that my pillow knows I, just how much comfort I, I can bear. I, and I just came by here I, just to tell you this morning I, that you're going to another place. I, but you got to always remember I, to bring something familiar I, with you on your journey. I, you got to bring something familiar I, that says no weapon formed against you I, shall be able to prosper. I, bring something familiar. I, that says the Lord is my shepherd I, I shall not want I, bring something familiar I, that says I will bless the Lord I, at all times I, and his praises I, shall continually I, be in my mouth I, and if you bring something familiar I, the Bible says I, in verse 45 I, that Jesus preached I, all the way to the other side I, of Galilee I, and I don't know about you uh, but I'm glad this morning uh, that Jesus didn't stop there uh, I'm glad this morning uh, that Jesus kept on going uh, to the other side of Galilee because uh, on the other side uh, there was a woman with an issue of blood uh, on the other side uh, there was a little girl uh, at the age of 12 uh, dead in Jairus' house uh, on the other side uh, there was a restless sea uh, that needed to be calmed uh, on the other side, uh, there was Lazarus uh, in the tomb. Uh, on the other side, uh, there was Bar Barabbas uh, who needed to see uh, a redeeming savior. Uh, on the other side, uh, there was a blind man uh, sitting by the pool. Uh, I don't know about you, uh, but I'm so glad this morning uh, that Jesus got the break he needed. Uh, because he took something familiar uh, and he went there. Uh, he went and gave him love. Uh, he went there. Uh, he went and gave him hope. Uh, I don't know uh, how you feel about it. Uh, but for those of you uh, who couldn't sleep last night. Uh, for those of you uh, who haven't been able to sleep all year long. Uh, you've been worried uh, about your children. Uh, you've been worried uh, about your school. Uh, you've been worried uh, how you're going to make it in me. I, I stopped by here I, just to tell you I, to bring something familiar I, with you on your journey. I, is there anybody here I, that can look back I, over your life I, and see what the Lord I, has done for you? I, I heard him say I, he's been a burden bearer. I, I heard him say I, he's been a heart fixer. I, I heard him say I, he's been a mind regulator. I, is there anybody here uh, that has gone uh, through something uh, in your life uh, and you know uh, you can trust uh, something you've been familiar with uh, I can trust uh, in the Lord uh, I can trust uh, in the King uh, is there uh, anybody here uh, I'm going on home uh, I'll see you later uh, but I'm so glad uh, that he kept on going because uh, on one Friday uh, 
They tried to block him uh, on one Friday. Uh, they tried to keep him uh, on one Friday. Uh, they did kill him uh, and he died. Uh, but early uh, on Sunday morning, uh, he had half uh, of his brain awake uh, and he went over uh, and tapped the other half uh, and said it's early uh, in the morning. Uh, and he got up uh, with all power uh, in his hands. Uh, is there uh, anybody here? Uh, you want to go higher? Uh, you're ready to go uh, to a new level? Uh, give God uh, some praise. He's worthy. He's worthy. Uh, say yes. Uh, is there anybody here? Uh, on this Sunday morning, ah, you've been trying to get fit, ah, you've been trying to get healthy, ah, but today, ah, God wants to know ah, if you can give me glory, ah, well, I'll give you rest, ah, if you give me glory, ah, I'll let you sleep tonight, ah, if you give me glory, ah, I'll take care of your kids, ah, if you give me glory, ah, you won't have to worry about your home, ah, if you give me glory, ah, won't have to worry about your children. Uh, is there anybody here uh, that can give God some glory? Uh, God, I need your rest. Uh, God, I need a break. Uh, God, I need some time uh, with you. Uh, is there anybody here? Uh, give God uh, some glory uh, from the rising of uh, the sun uh, to the going down of uh, the same. Uh, he's ready. Uh, He's worthy. Say yeah. Say yeah. Hallelujah. 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 But for about 30 of you, you ain't been able to go to sleep. But 30 of you, you haven't been able to have a rest. God says today, be not dismayed. Whatever betides you, God will. God will. God will. God will. God will take care. Take care of you uh, beneath his wings uh, of love abide uh, God uh, God uh, God will uh, take care uh, won't he take care uh, won't he take care uh, won't he give you joy uh, won't he give you hope uh, won't he give you peace uh, won't he give you love uh, say yeah say yeah Everybody's standing all over the house. Tell somebody, ah, do you see the sun? Ah, it's daybreak, ah, it's daybreak, ah, it's daybreak. Ah, go on, ah, get your rest. Ah, go on, ah, get your joy back. Ah, go on, ah, get your family back. Ah, go on, ah, get your marriage back. Ah, go on, ah, get your grace back. Ah, it's time. Ah, it's time uh, to give God uh, some praise. Uh, 